My name is Jeremy Robinson. I'm an ex-European Tour golfer and managing director of Black Star Golf. Welcome to our YouTube channel. The channel is all about promoting the careers of the young professional golfers that Black Star manage. But we are interested in all things golf. And today I would like to tell you about a great golfing amateur player of the past, Dr. William Tweddle. who was actually my wife's grandfather and great grandfather to my two sons. Please, if you like this program, support our channel by hitting the subscribe button giving us a like and hitting the red bell so that you can get follow-up content. Please leave a comment in the box below. We're always grateful for feedback. Our story starts by looking at what made the doctor, he was known in golfing circles as a courageous and unflappable player. I would like to start by talking about the year 1930. 1930 was a unique year for the best golfers in the world. This was the year that Bobby Jones, an amateur, arguably the best player ever, completed the Grand Slam of golf. Nobody had done it before and nobody has done it since. To complete the Grand Slam, you have to win the four biggest championships on the golfing calendar. Now that is the US Masters, the US PGA, the US Open and the Open Championship. Back in 1930 there was no Masters, indeed there was no Augusta National. Bobby Jones did not build it for another two years and the US PGA was still in its infancy. The four majors then were the US Amateur, the US Open, the Open Championship which started in 1860, and the Amateur Championship which was first played in 1885. It's hard for us now to grasp the importance of the Amateur Championship as a major. We are so used to majors belonging to top pros of the day with a bit part for the amateurs. However, back in those days, amateurs were not only able to give the top pros of the day a run for the money, they were among the top players in the world. Among the viewing public, the amateur championship was rated as highly, if not more so, than the Open, as evidenced by the fact that the amateur championship would attract the biggest attendances. There would be 12,000 plus fans following a single match. It's in this red-hot arena of competitive sport that William, Bill Tweddle, known as the Doctor, performed some of the most amazing feats of David versus Goliath clashes. The Doctor was born towards the end of Queen Victoria's reign in 1897 to a County Durham family. He was the eldest child of four. His father, also William, and mother Elizabeth were farmers. They were prosperous and employed many local people. They moved from Wickham near Gateshead to Laban, a small town in Wensleydale in North Yorkshire, which was situated by the River Ewer, when Bill, as they called him, was just four years old. As a successful farming family, this was no doubt a good move. Bill's grandmother, Anne Tweddle, a widow in her 70s, lived with them. The fact that she is recorded as living by private means suggests that the family had been successful farmers for some time. Bill already had a younger sister before the move and two more siblings arrived while they lived in North Yorkshire. The move to Laban was fortuitous in more ways than one, as they lived within walking distance of Laban Golf Club. Bill would walk across the golf course to his school each day. Interestingly, his father is recorded in the Shields Daily News as the landlord of Laban Golf Course. Bill started playing golf there when he was just seven years old. There is no record of the coaching he received, but accounts of the time don't credit him with having the classic style of Harry Varden, the great golfer of the period, elegant in dress and manner and golf swing. Bill was renowned for his levels of concentration, determination and terrific courage in match play situations. He had a swing all of his own. It's been described by others as upright, bowed wrist, awkward and with a curious stance and his hands and arms straight out and a long way from his body. Sounds a bit like Bryson. Today, golf fans and pundits would think more about whatever gets the job done. Back then, it led to him being seriously underrated in top golfing circles. This suited his modest and humble approach to golf and life. It left many an opponent ruining such a judgment. But where did that courage under fire come from? Well, we need to look back to his late teens. Bill, who was 17 years old when World War I broke out, was still in education. In 1915, he enrolled in the Universities and Public Schools Battalion. He was 18 years old. The following year, he was commissioned into the Durham Light Infantry. He had the rank of Lieutenant and was subsequently made an acting captain. 
These small facts we know trip off the tongue in short order. They in no way do justice to the horrific situation that Bill and his generation, as often nothing more than young boys were forced to face. By the time 1917 rolled round, the British force found itself more or less fighting the war alone against the Germans. Both sides looked for a breakthrough with spectacular and deadly offensives. The British attacked at Ypres. They detonated 450 tonnes of high explosives planted under the German line. And so, at 3.10 hours on June the 7th, this explosion that was so great it was heard on the south coast of England, started the Third Battle of Ypres, more commonly known as Passchendaele, after the small village where the intense fighting would be concentrated. This place became hell on earth. It rained constantly, the worst rain for 40 years. There was never-ending heavy artillery bombardment from both sides. This churned up the land, destroying all the local drainage systems and caused devastating injuries to the soldiers. As a lieutenant, Bill would likely have been responsible for 30 men. During the brief lulls in the weather, the British attacked across the battlefield and made modest gains, but often at great cost to life. Both sides lost approximately 250,000 men each at Ypres. Bill was awarded the Military Cross and Bar. The Military Cross is awarded for gallantry under fire. The London Gazette entry for the first time he won his medal reads, Military Cross for conspicuous gallantry and devotion to duty. When ordered to take an urgent supply of ammunition to the front line, he led his men through a heavy barrage and succeeded in delivering it at a most advanced position. The violent counter-attack developed and he took a position with his party and opened fire on the enemy. His position was isolated, but his courage and initiative enabled him to render material assistance at a critical time. The second time he won this medal, the Gazette entry reads, he greatly assisted in consolidating a captured position and maintained his ground with great courage and determination until he was wounded when the enemy heavily attacked from three sides and isolated the brigade. He set a very fine example for his men. Bill was wounded twice. On the second occasion he was in hospital, when in 1918 the armistice was declared. No wonder no future golf match or opponent ever fazed or intimidated Bill Tweddle. Join us for part two when we talk about the doctor, a force in both medicine and golf. Please feel free to like this video and also subscribe to our YouTube channel Black Star Golf to receive other features and tips throughout 2022.